is the emergence of the OCU communication of Fenariots and Schismatics with Uniates and Roman Catholics has increased dramatically. It is generally accepted that such discourses exaggeration, escalation and grand conspiracy. However, in this video we will provide only specific facts of this communication and concelebration only over the autumn of 2019. Since the emergence of the OCU, its head Epiphany Domenko has been engaged in the most vigorous negotiations with the head of the Uniates, Sviatoslav Shevchuk. Epiphany said they had developed a cooperation roadmap. We have a certain path to our future cooperation. So, in the future, we will be looking for the points of contact that will unite us. Sviatoslav Shevchuk said that it is time to seek unity, the unity of the once united Kiev Church. This дорожня карта, про яку, скажем, згадував блаженніший Епіфаній, це ні що інше, як певні наші наміри спільно послужити своєму народові і розвивати традицію колись єдиної, а сьогодні, на жаль, поділеної Київської церкви. І шукати шляхів для того, щоб не просто об'єднуватися, але єднатися. Бо ми вже сьогодні можемо єднатися. The Uniate Metropolitan Boris Guzak says that unity with the OCO is not a theory, but a very real thing. Є погано, якщо ми звикли до того, що ми поділені. Я маю на увазі на практиці, оцей міжконфесійний. Це на практиці ми маємо йти до тої єдності. Це є реальна річ, це не є лише, знаєте, теорія в хмарках. Блаженніший Святослав, він дуже чітко в сам день виступив радісно з підтримкою. Кажучи, що ми простягаємо братню руку, щоб йти разом до цієї єдності. The hierarchs of Fana say the same thing. One of the exarchs who worked in the autumn of 2018 in Ukraine, Daniel Zelinsky, said, I'm sure that unification is possible. Even the spiritual fathers of the UGCC, His Eminence Andrei Sheptitsky, Joseph Slepe and other hierarchs repeatedly said that when the Orthodox Church of Ukraine has its own identity, Greek Catholics will have to find a way to unity with this church. Father Igor Shaban, the head of the UGCC Commission for the Promotion of Christian Unity, spoke more specifically about unity. He clearly said that the tops, Rome and Constantinople, should agree first, with the Oku recognizing the supremacy of Rome. Epiphany said almost the same thing on September 17, 2019 in Lviv, remarking that the key to the unification of the Oku and the UGCC is not in Ukraine, but in Rome and Constantinople. On the same day in Rome, Shevchuk met with Patriarch Bartholomew, where the parties decided to create a special commission to give a new impetus to the ecumenical dialogue. But this is all in theory. What do we have in practice? We will take a look at specific cases of these very unions and ecumenical dialogues. On September 22, 2019, a religious procession of the Catholic Church took place in Vinitsa, which ended in a mass. Three hierarchs of the Oku took part in this action, among them Simeon Shostatsky. The video of this event is very noticeable. On the part of the Catholics, there is no equal and respectful attitude towards them. The Oku members were invited to serve only as scenery to bring out the main character, Apostolic Nuncio Claudio Gujarati, who is engaged in lively interaction with Ukrainians. October 14, 2019, in the city of Varash, Catholic priest Vasily Plachotka prayed along with Epiphany Domenko and other members of the Oku in the altar of an Orthodox temple. Pay attention to Domenka's vestments. The silk ribbon with crosses is called a stole and is part of the liturgical vestments of the Catholic priest. 
This event received wide international response and the OCO spokesman Eustrati Zora was forced to make excuses for him. He stated that Plachotka was dressed in clothing that is used in the Roman Catholic Church during worship because of respect for the event and the OCO community. Zorea also denied the fact of this concelebration. Let's see ourselves. Plahotka kneels in the altar with the other hierarchs and priests of the Oku during the general prayer. He, among the priests of the Oku, comes out of the altar and stands along with the others. In the altar, the Catholic priest prays and reads the names in the same way as the clergy of the Oku. He makes the sign of the cross when everyone else does it. He, among other members of the Oku, kisses the gate icon and enters the altar through the royal gates. He, among other members of the Oku, kisses the altar cross held by Epiphany Dumenko. If everything described above, as Zora claims, is not concelebration, what is concelebration then? On November 4th, in the village of Germakovka, Ternopil region, the rector of the local Oku temple, Vladimir Stefanko, prayed at the festive Greek Catholic service together with the Uniad Bishop Dmitry Grigorok and Greek Catholic clergy. On November 16th, a memorial service was held at the St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York for the victims of the Holodomor in Ukraine, which was held by the Orthodox clerics of Fana in the United States and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. The worship was led by the head of the Oku in the United States, Metropolitan Anthony Sherba, and familiar personalities, the Uniat Metropolitan Boris Guziak, who said earlier that unity with the Oku is not a theory, but a very real thing, and Fana exec Daniel Zelinsky, who'd expressed confidence that the unification between Oku and Greek Catholics are possible. We can see the bishops and priests of the two churches dressed in liturgical vestments. That is, this is nothing less than concelebration. This event is particularly interesting for it reaffirms Epiphany's words. The key to the unity of the churches is in Rome and Constantinople. Thus, the Ukrainian units served with Fana bishops. On November 23rd, in the Glory Park of Kiev City, a memorial service was held for the Oku and the Unites, dedicated to the day of memory of the Holodomor victims. Epiphany with Drabinko participated on the one hand, and Sviatoslav Shevchuk with his priests on the other. Note that the Liti service was held as part of government events, which were also attended by hierarchs of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. However, they stood aside and did not take part in the service. Again, we know that Epiphany, Shevchuk and Drabinko were clad in liturgical vestments, unlike the UOC hierarchs. Therefore, this is a joint worship again. On November 25th, the hierarch of the Oku, Alexander Drabinko, prayed in the Catholic Cathedral of Brussels with the same units and Catholics. He was accompanied by the rector of the local Uniate community, Nazari Mikhailuk, and other Greek Catholic priests. In the photographs we can see that the Uniate bishops were not present there because Drabinka led the service. Again, Drabinka and the Uniates were wearing liturgical vestments. Nearly all of the previous cases concerned interfaith communication within Ukraine. The next one is a higher level. On November 12th, at the Catholic Abbey of Belgium, Notre Dame de saint rémy in Rochefort, the monastic order of the Cistercians held a joint service of the local Catholic community, Patriarch Bartholomew and representatives of Athos, Abbot of Xenophontus Monastery, Archimandrite Alexei and Hieromonk Theophilus from Pantocrator Monastery. Shevetong's Abbey's Catholic resource reports that the above persons prayed at the Vespers. It is also said that the Patriarch, after the service, expressed his joy over his presence at the Abbey and communication with his brothers.
Every year, on the day of the triumph of Orthodoxy, we pray in peaceful litany that the Lord will preserve His Church unharmed and undefeated by heresies and schisms and protect her with His peace. But nowhere in the Church are there prayers for the union with those who themselves have placed themselves behind her fence. Orthodox teaching implies that the Church of Christ is one and all the entities that are now tolerantly called by this word are not the genuine Church, but dissenters and heretics who have broken away from it, including Catholics. We pray for the return to the Church of those who have fallen from it, but not for the union with them. We know for sure that the Orthodox Church is the body of Christ, which holds salvation for us. We do not condemn the heterodox, but the issue of salvation of the Catholics is a matter of concern for the Catholics. St. Theophan the Recluse said, I do not want to indulge myself in a judgment whether Catholics will be saved, but I know one thing. If I abandon Orthodoxy and join Latinism, I will surely die. However, the responsibility of a priest for co-serving with heretics, and therefore Catholics, is spelled out in several rules of the Holy Apostles at once, and sounds very rigid. Such a clergyman must be excommunicated and defrocked. This rigidity is not a manifestation of hatred or anger towards those who are outside the Church. This action of the immune system of the Church organism means protection against external viruses. While we are in the true Church, we are reliably protected. But what will happen to us if we are no longer protected?